guys in this video I'm going to show you how to make some gum paste butterflies it's something that a few of you guys asked for after a class that I ran of a silver birch um, cake that had butterflies on so I've got some wings that are pre-made here so these ones are dry but I am going to make some fresh ones for you so you're just going to need a cutter and a veiner we don't have to do too much work because it's all really just been done for us in these ones and you can use different sizes so whichever ones you like and what I'll do is I'll put links in the description box below the video to what I've used. So I'm going to roll my paste out really thin. And there's a couple of different ways you can do the butterflies. I tend to do them with two wings separate. So I've gone fairly thin, probably not quite as thin as I would go for petals. Just because the wings become very fragile. Now I actually don't want the body in the middle so I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut them to a slight point in the middle of each wing there. Now you can leave it as it is, or if you prefer, you can thin the edge. So if it's looking a little bit clunky, just rub a balling tool just gently down the edges. If you press too hard, you will stretch the wings much bigger and they might not fit in your little veiner. So I'm just gonna try and push it close to that edge and let's press it down nice and firmly. Now, if it sticks to the veiner, just put some corn flour on the veiner. Mine wasn't too bad, I didn't have to actually cornflower that. But can you see it just puts in imprints for me. It just means it's easier when I'm painting it that it's already got a pattern on there. So I'll leave that flat to dry. I'll just do the same with the other one. So the pattern should be the same on both sides of the wings on this veiner. Then it's going to need a little body. So we'll start with the ball, we'll roll it into like a carrot shape. And then let's just roll an indentation there. So it's kind of got a separate head and body. And then the other way that I can make them is to actually wire the wings. So that first one I've done can be pushed straight into a cake without any kind of wiring. But if you want them sort of standing up off the cake a little bit more, you might want to wire them. So I've rolled it out on a veining board so that we're left with a vein that's a bit thicker. That's the bit I'm going to put my wire into. Do the same on this one. This one's a little bit thicker, but I think it should be all right once we've popped it in the veiner. So this time I'll just cut out one wing at a time. I didn't press quite hard enough on the cutter there, so let's just see if we can push down any scruffy edges. And then let's do the same with the other one. So I'm cutting out the other side of the wing this time. Now, when I thin the edges, I think those scruffy bits will disappear. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert a wire. I'm going to go fairly thin. I think this one's about a 24 gauge wire. In fact, it might even be 22. I should have really checked that out. What I'll do is I'll check and I'll put it in the description box below for you guys. Um, so I've inserted the wire, there's a tiny bit of water on the end of the wire before I push that in and then I'm just rubbing the edge of the wing with my balling tool just to thin it a little bit more. The ridge will disappear when we vein it. Now this vein is quite big actually that I've picked up so let's push it to the outside edge of the wing there. Press it down, bit of pressure and pull that out so the wire should stay in with that and then we'll rest that down flat to dry. Same with the other one. So just lift it up carefully. Then we're going to need to wire the body on this one. So just bend an extra piece of wire. So it's just got a small amount at the end, probably no bigger than a centimeter at the most at the end. And then we're going to make another little body the same as we did before. I think this one could be a little bit smaller since our wings are smaller. So if the bend in the wire is too long or the bit sort of at the top before the bend um, is really long, it'll stick out of one end of the body. Also where we push it in, is where we want our wings to come to. So you don't want to push it in near the very bottom of the body or near the top. It wants to be kind of about the middle. Again, you can just put a little bit of water or edible glue on the end of this wire that's just been inserted. Apologies that I think I had this a bit close to the camera, so it's a little bit blurry for you. Okay, so they just want some little antennas. So I've just got some black stamens, just quite small ones, these. I'm going to cut them in half. And I'm just going to poke a little hole with the wire in first, so two holes tiny bit of edible glue on the end of these and then you can push them in place. Now my stamens, they're fairly soft so that's why I've had to push the hole in first otherwise they just bend a bit much if I try and push them straight in. So we'll do that on both the bodies. Then we're going to leave those to dry. So usually I'd leave them overnight. I actually have some that I made earlier and I'm going to use powdered dust. This one's like an aubergine colour I think. You can use whatever colour you want. So I'm going to dust some colour on both sides. I'm going to concentrate the colour so it's a bit darker in the middle. The bit of the wing that will be near the body. I'm just going to keep the dust dry because I like the effect. So I'll do this on both wings. Catches quite nicely on the pattern. 
but we are going to go over the pattern a bit darker. Then I'm just going to go around where the pattern's kind of raised. So it helps me create more detail by using that veining tool. So you can use an edible pen or you can paint, it's up to you. Some of the thinner bits are easier with the pen. Some of the bigger parts, they're harder to color in because the pen's quite thin. So I'm gonna swap to a little bit of painting and I've just got some dipping solution. So I'm gonna mix that with some powder. So it's edible powder, although you probably wouldn't eat the butterflies. So we're gonna use flower paste or gum paste for the wings. So I've mixed the black powder and we're just gonna paint over the wings. So I've got quite a thick brush. It's given me quite a heavy coverage. So you can see the difference between that and where I've used the pen. And you can play around with the patterns. So I'm trying to follow the lines that are on there a little bit, but then I'm adding sort of my own extra kind of lines and stripes at the top. Now, because of the dipping solution, it should dry fairly quickly, should this, so that you can turn it over and do the same on the other side. I'm not too worried if my pattern doesn't match identical on the back. And then we're just gonna do exactly the same. And I'm gonna do this way around. Then I'm gonna paint up the other wings. This time I'm actually gonna put the color on the outside edge just to see if it makes much of a difference. And we'll leave the middle. That's kind of lilac-y color. In fact, let's even just add a bit of the black powder in the middle, just a light amount, not too much. It's slightly gray. And done the same on both sides. So I've flipped the wing over, both wings, both sides. Again, we're just gonna paint the edges just like I did with the other one. Play around with the pattern a little bit though. So I haven't spent very long on this. I must admit I was in a big rush. So these were going on a cake that I made for Cake International that was going to the Wedding Cakes collaboration. And um, I had left it very late in the day to create these. So it was a little bit of a rush job. I would have liked to have spent longer on them. And you can also paint the centers for the bodies. And what I'm gonna do is just quickly tape together this one so the one that's not wired we don't really need to do much to until we stick it on the cake this one we need to carefully bend the wire up near the wing just be really careful that the wings are fully dry and also that you don't snap them when you're bending that wire the more you bend them the more open the wings will be so I don't want them too open I think about that should be fine apologies I did hold this slightly out of shot and then what I'm going to do is insert the body in the middle between those two wings and we're just going to use a bit of florist tape to tape those all together. So the florist tape doesn't always feel sticky when you first start it. You have to kind of stretch it. And then as you stretch it and pull it tight around the wires, it does become a little bit stickier. And just paint as many wings as you want. So you see, I actually made them in all different sizes. So play around with colours. I'm keeping to this same colour scheme because it's actually for a display cake that I'm doing. I've done them in lots of different colors in my classes and students come up with some really nice, bright, colorful designs and ideas for these. There we go, all done. So I don't actually need too many butterflies for this cake because it's not a very big cake. So to stick them on, so I've got my cake. Apologies for the bad filming. We handheld the camera for this. Just a small ball of fondant, a little bit of water on. And then I'm just gonna push those wings into the fondant. Try and push them in at the angle you want them to stay. I think I put it slightly to one side there. And then I'm just gonna push the body in the middle. Okay, so that should dry on there without any problems. We've got another piece of paste. This one I'm going for pink paste, just in case you see it a bit more. I could have used white, white or pink. It's fine, so just do the same again. These ones are a little bit heavier, so I might have to hold them just for a second. And then the small one, the wired butterfly, I pushed into my little posy of flowers in the top. Don't put a wire directly into an actual cake. You want to put it into a posy pick so the wire is not coming into direct contact with your cake. So there they are, nice and easy. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.